Hi, this is The Philosophical Angle, defining concepts in current media. I am your host, Chris Angle. I am the author of four books on philosophy, one of which is The Nature of Aesthetics, another is The Philosophical Equations of Economics. These books are available for free for viewing online at www.philosophypublishing.com. The purpose of the philosophical angle is to examine the nature of the concepts and topics being used in current media and compare its essence with the usage and circumstances in how they are being used. Well, during the entire presidential debate there was a lot of emphasis on the economy. So why don't we just go ahead and explore what is the nature of an economy and see where it might lead us. Let's proceed. Let's go to our first graph, our first chart. And here we'll start out with the, with the concept of the nature of an economy. Lately there's been much in the news about the GDP, the gross domestic product, falling. Uh, it's now <clears throat> down in the 2% or less range. And the gross domestic product is really the sum of transactions that make up an economy. So the natural question is, what is a transaction? A transaction is a sacrifice on one side, is an equi well, it's an equation really, whereby one side offers their information and knowledge, and their time and their effort to produce something. So they'll supply something. Let's say it's a uh, a tube of toothpaste for today. And they supply something and they sacrifice their information, time, and effort in an atmosphere of risk and opportunity. Risk and opportunity is really nothing else but the flip side of each other. So that's to supply something. And on, this, on the other side of the sacrifice, there's a demand side. And we're able to demand something because we have already worked for it. When we go down and buy a tube of toothpaste at, at our local store, we have already sacrificed our information, our time, our effort, and our material, if it's a product, to produce something. We get something from the, from the company or uh, that, uh, such as money. Uh, we're at, we get compensation for that effort. And we bring it because we have sacrificed these things of ours that we own. Again, our, our information, our, 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 our knowledge, our effort. Uh, in some cases, our material, and uh, in and and we also uh, are sacrifice. We also in the, uh, we use we have risk in doing so, in getting to work, in making these products. And this is our sacrifice. And so we're sacrificing some uh, these these ingredients to supply something so that we can also meet somebody who has supplied something, who has risked something and, uh, and produced something and produced uh, a product and has also sacrificed so that we can go to a marketplace and we can make a swap. Because at Walmart, where you buy a piece of toothpaste or a tube of toothpaste or your local pharmacy, you're swapping the production that you did at work 
for Walmart's sacrifice in going out and purchasing that tube uh, from a manufacturer and they swapped their production for the manufacturer's production which ultimately was your production so at Walmart which is a a marketplace nothing else but a marketplace for these transactions you swap your production for the production of the manufacturer and an even swap the manufacturer supplied some toothpaste you supply the demand but that's not the entire story because there's not only because in mathematics we know that when a equals b b equals a and sure enough here it is the same the manufacturer also has a demand he demands your money so he supplies his transaction emit to your demand for us for some toothpaste you supply him with money hit which is his demand so both sides have supply and a demand in the equation both sides have a sacrifice to produce something and so ultimately we have our transaction of RITE of risk information uh, time and effort and material for supply on the opposite side would that be demand and again on this side you'll have demand and opposite side supply so <clears throat> it balances out now where does this demand come from well demand the origin of all demand is within our our nature as as life's entities we desire to bring ourselves up away from misery we all do we all want to bring ourselves up away from misery and obtain that which is good for ourselves and after ourselves for our family and after our family for others for others in society but that's the progression so from our desire from our to live and and, and uh, be well we have desire for those things that will make our lives good and from this goodness we have a demand and we take that demand and we want to acquire things that are good for us so how do we do that well that demand allows us gives us the will that demand for goodness to, to gives us the will to produce something so that we can offer another that is supply somebody else with a product for which we can exchange goodness the implication here is kind of amazing it implies that production is good equals goodness products equal goodness because they are they come into into existence to satisfy demand which comes from our desire for goodness and bring ourselves up away from misery so really an economy is nothing else but something that will help us bring forth products that will make ourselves better and make our lives more fruitful and make our lives happier and bring goodness to us so now let's go into some of the other problems that happen with an economy such as well it seems to be that a equals b b equals a but how is it that prices fluctuate within this the scheme of things well let's take a look let's go to our next chart here we have prices for your products that you'll have 
in the marketplace. So in the marketplace, we have competition also. And what happens with competition is that a new product will arrive. And that can be either within the company that's producing the product, or it could be from another company exterior to that. But nevertheless, companies often produce products inside the company that will compete with each other. Look at General Motors. How many cars do they produce? All those cars compete with one another as well as with cars outside being produced by other manufacturers. Again, let's go look at our toothpaste. Manufacturers come out and they say, okay, we have some toothpaste here. We'll call it um, Brand X Regular. But then they get, a fear, they get an idea that maybe the entire market would have some other notions or really priorities in getting a better product. So they'll call it X plus. Toothpaste X plus. And they come out with a new product and has a little extra mint or something in it. And what happens is that this is an efficiency. It's an efficiency in the sense that it's bringing more good and more goodness, just as here, it brings more goodness to fill a demand that will make your life better. So it comes out with uh, Toothpaste X Plus. And that will compete, we'll call that product B here, and that will compete with product A, which is the regular, to fulfill a, a demand, which is a priority. Now a priority is how you make decisions. You make decisions by information coming into your consciousness and you attach priorities to this information and store it in memory. And when you attach your priority, that's a piece of knowledge and the combination of the priority with the information becomes a piece of knowledge which helps you order your lives and will allow you to make decisions as to what is good for you as an individual. Same on the supply side. It's exactly the same except just the company is supplying something. It sees that there's a perhaps a priority out there that could be filled that is now lacking. So they add the plus make their product be, and they add in their own information and knowledge to establish that product be. And they do that by making an efficiency with regard to fulfilling the goodnesses that they perceive that lie outside in the marketplace. So what happens is that product B, our better product, now competes with product A. And some, some people, some consumers, will perceive that product B has an efficiency that fulfills their priorities, and so they'll purchase that. And suddenly product A is now in competition with product B. And that'll cause the amount of supply and the amount of demand for these products to fluctuate. So before, product A had 100% of the market, product B has now come in, and now you've got price competition. Demand will now uh, exceed supply, or supply will exceed demand on the equilibrium that was in previous in place. And from that, of course, as everybody knows from elementary economics when demand is greater than supply, you're going to get rising prices. And when supply is greater than demand, 
you're going to get decreasing prices. So in this case, when the better product was, has been introduced, and the, uh, uh, suddenly the uh, uh, demand for this product reduces, is, is diminishing, you possibly could get an uh, a decrease in pricing. So competition, in its essence, is a conflict of priorities. You've got a company here producing product A and either another division of the company or a different company producing product B. You have a conflict of priorities. And those conflicts are what produce price fluctuations in the marketplace. And from these priorities and these products, they are sold in a marketplace, such as a store or an exchange of some sort, where an exchange happens. And we can call that an economic niche. Product A will and Product B will have their own individual economic niches because private uh, Product A is not as expensive as Product B. Product B has a little more ingredients, uh, such as mint or something for the toothpaste. And uh, they'll have a separate product niche. Well, you can do some interesting things with that. If you have, if you know uh, what makes up the product and the transaction which we discussed, if we go back here, we know that the transaction is really a sacrifice of your risk, your information, your time, and your effort, and sometimes material. We can take in that, we can take that to the marketplace, and and each one of these will have a a a a, a quantification to it. We can therefore make vectors with these particular quantifications, and it can establish a point of a niche inside an economic market uh, inside an economic market. And as the company's information and knowledge uh, introduce new efficiencies to their products, which might include a product C, these, the niche being supplied with the parameters of the individual products, as we noted here, in, will actually, you can track its movement within an economic transaction. Uh, 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 niche. So, let's go to some other problems. Let's go over to our third chart. And um, let's review a little bit. As we stated before, we have a desire for goodness. And from that goodness, we have a will to go out and obtain what we want for, for our lives. And in order to do that, uh, we must produce something. And this is right from the most primitive economy to right now. Even in the most primitive economy, uh, you wanted uh, uh, food for your family, food for yourself and for your family. So what happens? Let's say you make a tool, like a, like a bow and arrow or something. And that allows you to be more efficient, just as we said here before. In our, in our production, we become more efficient. We create a tool. And we use that tool to go out into the marketplace, such as a forest, in this case. And this allows us to obtain some food. This concept is in each and every product within an economy. So this food is goodness. And then we add more efficiencies. So we've made our bow and arrow, but now let's say we make a better one. So we've seen the efficaciousness of 
going out and getting a tool that helps us get more food, we make a, uh, a better one that shoots a little bit farther. And so uh, within our knowledge and information that we've gained from their first product, we add that knowledge in, uh, into uh, a new product, which produces an efficiency, which allows us to go out and create a new product or an enhanced product. But an enhanced product is really a new product in its, in its essence. And we can take that and we can take it to an exchange and uh, we can swap it for, uh, for other products. So now, of course, in modern society, we have money. <clears throat> so with money, we are able to be a little bit more efficient instead of going and bartering <coughs> we can swap it for money and then take that money and go and get another product. So it's an efficiency within the marketplace. Now here's something that's interesting. When we produce something, just like the hunter and gatherer we just had who came out with a bow and arrow, if he's successful and the product works, Perhaps he goes out and he produces uh, more than he needs. He produces something.